back in grade 10, I remember taking Spanish 2. And uh, at the time, I wasn't doing very well. My teacher sent a progress report home that had to be signed by my dad. And it was an F. Uh, and so I had to change, I decided I would change that F to a B. And so that's what I did. I erased it, watered it up a bit to make it look kind of crinkled. And so you couldn't tell that it was with a pencil that I did it. I gave it to my dad. He signed it. And then I took it back to school, changed it back to an F and gave it to my teacher. And for a little bit, I thought I got away with it. But I started to panic a bit because I wasn't doing very well in the class still. I thought maybe I could bring my grade up. And I was wondering if uh, my teacher was going to contact my dad. And so I was always uh, waiting when I got home to get in trouble, uh, but it didn't come. And I was becoming miserable. And uh, one day, uh, my dad gets a letter in the mail. He comes, opens it up, and I hear James Michael Waters. And when my dad screamed that out, I knew I was in trouble, and I knew what it was for. And it was my teacher had written my dad a letter telling him that I was doing terrible in Spanish. I have always loved VeggieTales. I watched it with my kids. Now all are pretty grown up, but Eli, but still the messages that are taught are biblical and practical. And in King George and the ducky, King George steals a rubber ducky just because he wants it. Then to get rid of the evidence, he sends Junior off to the war, uh, to the pie wars to get pied. And I love that song in there, you know, being selfish doesn't pay, tried it just the other day. I thought I would be happy. I thought it was the way, but it weren't. Now, of course, this corresponds with the biblical tale of David and Bathsheba. David has an affair with her and she becomes pregnant. To try to hide this, David uh, first tries to get Uriah to sleep with his wife. But when that doesn't happen, he sends him off to war to be killed on the front lines of battle. Finally, Nathan the prophet comes and gives a parable of the story of the rich man who took away the poor man's lamb. David becomes outraged with the story and wants to punish that wicked old man for being so cruel. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 7 and 9, the Bible says this, Then Nathan said to David, You are that man. The Lord, the God of Israel, says, I anointed you, king of Israel, and saved you from the power of Saul. I gave you your master's house and his wives in the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And if that had not been enough, I would have given you much, much more. Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this terrible deed? For you have murdered Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the Ammonites and stolen his wife. Today we are talking about when God interrupts our misery. The misery of our own doing that has wreaked havoc on our lives. Compounded with guilt and shame, we get buried by the weight of our sins. We know this is the case. When we live opposed to God, we are constantly waiting for someone to find the truth about what we did. We try to hide what we have done against God, and we long for relief. In Psalm 32, uh, we see the Psalm of David's repentance. Uh, and you see these words in verse 1 to 3. It says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Today, I want to focus on verse 3. Now, I have been on both sides of this coin. I have been the one that has received the rebuking, and I've also been the one that had to confront the guilty party. Uh, maybe God will use this message today to speak to your heart about what you've been doing in the shadows that nobody else knows about. Maybe God will stir your heart to speak to a loved one or a friend who is needing you to be the one that speaks the truth of love into his or her life and bring about the freedom that comes from repentance. And the first thought today is the idea of refusing. You know, we all have the chance when we do something wrong to immediately ask for forgiveness, to admit that we're wrong. Now, this doesn't mean that there are no consequences for our actions, but we should do this. Uh, I remember watching a movie, uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, about some teenagers that hit a guy uh, when they were driving down the road, weren't paying attention, and he ends up dying. They didn't want to get in trouble, and so they tried to hide it. 
and eventually it just it eats at them and wears them down. They refused uh, to admit they're wrong. The idea of refused here in Psalm 32 means to be deaf or silent, to refuse to take, take action. Uh, when we know what we did is wrong, we shouldn't just refuse to ignore God. But the truth of the matter is, is that many times we do. It's kind of like, you know, when I was younger, my dad, he would whistle from across uh, the flats or the apartments that we lived at. And when he whistled, everybody knew it was time for me to go and, and to stop playing around and to go home. And, you know, sometimes I would just pretend I couldn't hear it just because I didn't want to go home then. Now, God desires for us to come to him when he convicts our hearts of the wrong we have done. Uh, when the Holy Spirit says, you are that man or you are that woman, you are the guilty party, you are caught. We have a choice. Do we heed to God or do we run away? Now, the truth is sin is pleasurable. That's why we long to do it, but only for a season. Psalm 119, one, verse 176 says this, I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me, for I have not forgotten your commands. We cannot stop sinning, but we can sin less and less. This is our reality of living in a broken world. There is no excuse for sin, and there are always consequences for our actions. When we choose to ignore God's word, we wander away like lost sheep. And when we need to, and we need to listen as the good shepherd is trying uh, to call us back to where we need to be. When Jesus calls, don't ignore him, repent. And the second thought is wasting away. These next two points deal with the consequences for ignoring God. Because when we ignore the Lord, then our guilt and misery pile upon our shoulders and we get buried by them. And the idea here of waste away means to be worn out, to decompose, to decay, and to be consumed. David had done some pretty terrible things. And these things wore upon him to the point that he was even physically exhausted. It was kind of reminding me of a, a movie that I was watching. These friends are going backpacking to a campsite. And as they're walking the trails, uh, one guy, his friends decided that they're going to start putting little rocks in his bag. He can't feel that little rock as it gets in his bag. But eventually he's like, oh, guys, I'm so tired. And I don't know why. By the time he gets back to where they're going to the campground, he dumps out his bag and sees all the rocks. You know, if you live in sin, that is exactly what it's like. Those rocks just keep piling upon you because the lies and our actions continue to pile up just like those stones in the bag. Eventually, we feel like that we're just being crushed uh, by the weight of our misery and we need relief. I, I like that little kid's song, you know, how do you spell relief? J-E-S-U-S. -S. Now, often we feel we don't deserve God's forgiveness and this is true, we don't. But you see, God is love and he's gracious. He wants to forgive you. He longs to remove that burden from your shoulders. Psalm 86, 5 says this, uh, You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. God wants to interrupt your misery. He desires to forgive you. He is just waiting for you to call out. And this brings me to my third thought of groaning. Back when I was in high school, I was walking down a trail in the middle of the summer uh, and I had fallen into a cactus, got stuck inside of my leg. Uh, of course, it was very irritating and hurt. I cried out a bit. But, you know, sin is kind of like that. And the fact that the closer we get to sin, uh, it sticks into you. It causes pain and irritation. It makes you miserable. And the word groan here means to have an utterance expressing pain, screaming, or crying out. And uh, I was also remembering that when I first came to Zambia, I had climbed on a ladder, didn't have anybody hold it, and that ladder slipped down. And when it slipped down, I fell on the ground, and I was moaning. I was crying out on the ground, and Abby comes over to me. She was about 18 months old. She goes, Daddy, you okay? And I was like, uh, no, go away. <laughs> you know, the, the problem is, is that many times... Uh, we can cause our own play, pain, uh, much like me uh, not uh, being smart about the latter, uh, when we refuse to turn to God. Now, again, I'm not saying that there are no consequences if we say sorry immediately after sinning. You know, holding a cactus will leave some marks, and most likely uh, you will have a reaction that makes you itch for some time. But the misery that comes from holding on to that sin from, is, is much worse if we don't repent. Psalm 6, verse 1 to 3 says, O oh Lord, don't rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your rage. Have compassion on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. I am sick at heart. How long, O oh Lord, until you restore me? When we repent, God will restore. There's a peace uh, when we choose to live in the light. 
a relief that comes from forgiveness. God today wants to interrupt that misery that you're in. Uh, He is crying out, you are the guilty one. David could have continued to ignore God. But when confronted with his sin, he turned back to the Lord. Psalm 51 is the testimony of the peace and joy that comes from a forgiving, loving God. So will you stay under the weight of your sin or will you cry out for freedom by coming clean? Let God interrupt your misery. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for the day. Thank you for your word. Uh, Thank you for this passage about David uh, who did some horrible things, God, but He was still a man after your own heart because he was willing uh, to turn back to you. And I pray, God, that today, uh, if there are any out there that are struggling with sin, Lord, that you would give them power to say, uh, God, I need you. Lord, forgive me. And that you will restore them back to where they need to be. And I pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great, great day. Amen.